Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been like, uh, like six months since I've made a video, and I still look like I'm 12, but here I am. Um, so I, I wasn't planning on making any more videos, but I saw Anastasia, the musical, and I thought I would give my review of it since I, I looked up on YouTube, um, reviews of the musical and there hadn't really been any, so... Uh, just a little background, um, I live, like, four-ish hours away from Connecticut, um, this is being put on in Hartford, Connecticut, like, the city of Hartford, um, so me and my friend drove about, like, eight hours round trip to go see this, so we stayed in a hotel overnight, and we saw it on a Friday night, um, in May, um, we saw it towards the beginning of when they were, um, when they started the run of the show, Here's the playbill, just, it's Anya on the bridge, and then the reflection of the H is the Hartford Stage Company. Um, <clears throat> so, it was, they took, a, they said it was inspired by the movie. So, it wasn't, if you're going in there expecting that it's going to be exactly like the movie, you'll probably be somewhat disappointed. Like, we were, we got there pretty early, so we were just sitting in, and I was reading through, I was reading through the character list, I'm like, where, like, where's Rasputin, where is the little, like, bad guy, I was like, I was like, where is it, I was like, where's In the Dark of the Night, that's my favorite song, I was like, oh my god, and then I started reading this. And I was like, is this, did they just change this into a love story? Story Like, you're reading through this, and um, they added a lot, a lot of songs. Like, this reminded me a little bit of Les Mis, and the fact that, like, some of this could have definitely been monologues, but instead they made it into songs, which I am okay with. But if you're expecting, if, if you're not a huge fan of musicals, you probably won't like this. And it, specifically the music, um, there was a ton of dancing in this, like, you know, there was a ballet section, which they incorporated very well, um, I think it was very well done, I really enjoyed it, I am a huge, huge fan of the movie, like, I have been waiting for this for years, I am, I was so excited when I saw that this was gonna be a thing and that the tickets were out I bought them I bought them back in February so I've been so excited to see this and it blew me away I mean I when I was sitting there before the show I was like oh crap I was like there's no Rasputin there's no in the dark of the night I was like I'm gonna be so disappointed but it started off it started off just like the beginning of the movie with the Dowager Empress and Anastasia they're well, similar, very similar to the start of the movie, and they're sitting on the couch, and they have the music box, and literally some of the dialogue, I'm pretty sure, was pulled directly from the movie, and they sing, soon you'll be home with me, you know, they sing a little bit of Once Upon a December, it's really cute, and the, just the whole way they set up the beginning was really well done, um, they had, you know, like how they had the whole dance sequence, um, like, in the beginning of the movie that kind of follows through when she does, you know, her Once Upon a December, that whole thing is set up at the beginning, so, like, you keep seeing the same scene again, and it's very ominous. There's, they have the whole ballroom, and, well, backtracking. When you have the Dowager Empress and Anastasia sitting on the couch, um, the, um, you have the Tsar and the Tsarina, they come in, and they're kind of putting on this fake type, you know, you can tell that there's some underlying tension, but Anastasia is in the room, and they're, like, trying to fake it, but you can tell that they're scared, but they go to the dance, and then, and then the guards come in, and they start shooting them, and it's really scary, and you see them all running, the whole set turns red, it's really cool, and you can see the snow outside, it is so well done, and then, uh, like, that last scene, like, um, the last part of that scene, it's Anastasia with the music box, and she, like, holds it up, and you hear a shot go off, and the lights go black, and then all you can see is snow and, like, darkness, and it's just brilliant. I, like, I was, 
I was like, this is just great. I really love this musical. I'm so, I will be so excited to see it again. I think that moving forward, they could definitely benefit from a larger ensemble because they reuse the same people. So they basically, they have the whole family, the royal family, and they reuse those people in the ensemble. But it, it's pretty obvious that the three, like the three uh, sisters, uh, you know, Anya's sisters, they reuse them pretty prominently as the, like the Anastasia, the fake Anastasias that Vlad and Dimitri bring in. And they have like a pretty large role at the beginning of the show, which I think they definitely could have, you know, once if they once they transition to Broadway, they should definitely make a larger cast because there are a lot of big numbers like a rumor in St. Petersburg. Um, there, uh, what else? The the there's a scene right at, towards the end of Act One that's big. Per, uh, Perry holds a key to your heart. Like they keep all of that. Um, the songs that they did keep from the movie, if you're interested, Once Upon a December, December, Aurora in St. Petersburg, Learn to Do It, um, Journey to the Past, per Paris Holds a Key to Your Heart. Um, they use Once Upon a December multiple times. I believe that's it that they keep from the movie, but honestly, it... It's really well done. If you appreciated the movie and you can appreciate the changes that they made, they tried to make it more historically accurate, which that was some of the criticisms of the movie was that it wasn't historically accurate. Um, and I think like they had this whole doc, you know, they they've they've done way more research since the movie coming out to prove that Anastasia was actually murdered. So. You know, like, this, these were actual people. I think the musical does a very good job of treating the history well. And so instead of having Rasputin and, you know, the fake little, you know, Disney-esque type of thing, they make it more of, like, a political statement about Lenin and about um, communism and the dangers and how, like, you can see the undertones. Like, like the main guy that they, so basically what they did is that they replaced Rasputin with this guy named Gleb. Um, trying to figure out who plays him. Um, yeah, they replace him with this guy named Gleb, who is the son of one of the guards that killed the royal family. And you know how they, you know how they had in the movie that Dimitri worked in the palace. Well, instead they kind of changed it to be that Gleb, um, Gleb's father was there that night, and so was Gleb, the, this now, he's now, like, this, um, this leader for, and, you know, he works in line with Lenin, um, and he's, like, and he has this whole song in the beginning, how, uh, it's called, yeah, it's called a, a simple thing, and basically, like, he's saying that if, he had the chance that he would do, he would murder Anastasia, like, he would, he would have taken the gun himself and shot the royal family, because, you know, that's what, you know, the right thing to do, and, um, but the, you see throughout the show that he has some problems with this, like, he was very, very sure at the beginning about how, um, how great Lenin is, how great communism is, and how he would do anything, you know, to continue communism. Um, but you see throughout the show that he, you know, he gains a heart. Like, he realizes that what's going on isn't actually great for the people. So he begins to question it, which is was really cool to see throughout, act, like, Act 2 that really develops. Um, but they keep mainly the same plot of the movie. Like, they... Anya comes in. Well, she has a new song that they put in, and it's really cool. It's called In My Dreams. Um, and she basically recounts, like, they, they play up the amnesia thing a lot. Um, and so she basically, that song is telling the whole story about how, like, she showed up at the orphanage and she couldn't remember anything, um, couldn't remember, remember her name, um, and she goes through that, and it's very cool, because every time she has this, like, sort of, like, 
I can't remember type of moments. The snow comes back, like it all gets this like sort of like ambient, somewhat creepy feel. There, there are some moments in the show that I was surprised for how creepy it was. It reminded me a little bit of how Phantom has that little bit of like a creepy edge to it, um, which I really love. Like uh, they, they found really cool moments in the show to underlie how you know people were murdered. Like this is not like all happy-go-lucky. Like there's communism. There was murder. Like there was you know, Anastasia herself was murdered, so they, they do a very good job with that, which I really enjoyed, Journey to the Past was fucking amazing, it was the Act 1 closer, which, it's amazing, like, they end up in Paris at the end of Act 1, I should have said there are spoilers, but there are spoilers here, I don't know what to say, um, but it is, it is unreal how good this girl, Christy Altamir, she plays Anya, um, try to grab, not grab, pull it, you want to find the picture of her. Yeah, she was in Mamma Mia, oh, shit show, but she, she is so good. She sounds so similar to Liz, what's her name, Liz Calloway from the original movie. Sounds so good. And who is the guy, Dimitri, Derek Klena, right there. He was so good, too. He was, he one of his, this is my one, like, big criticism of the show, is I didn't like his songs, like, uh, what, um, trying to see, My Petersburg, it was dumb, it was just, it felt like it wanted to be Santa Fe from Newsies, but it was not that good, like, he, it, some of the lyrics sounded exactly like Santa Fe, but it, it just was not, that was something that maybe should be changed from Broadway, from this to Broadway is some editing of the songs, because there are a ton of songs. Like I said, some of these could be deleted, like that one, that could go. He, he has another, um, he has another solo in Act 2, which is way better, but this one, not good at all. I would not, I would say they could just cut it. It was not that good. It was just very repetitive. The, like, the actual theme of the song was really repetitive. So that I didn't enjoy. Also, they had this weird beginning of... So, basically, when they're leaving Russia, they have to get fake papers because they're not allowed to leave, you know, because of communism and crap. I, you know, very restrictive on travel. Basically, they got fake passports and... Um, they ended up pulling people off of the train and shooting them if they had this certain color passport, which is what they ended up having. So they end up jumping off the train. But before they get on the train, they're in the train station. And it kind of, they have this song, I'm not sure if it's called the, oh, uh, yeah, Stay, I Pray You, or We'll Go From Here or There. I'm not sure which one because of where it's listed in the program and it's been a while since I've seen it. But it starts off completely a cappella with this random ass guy just standing there singing it. I'm like, I was like, what is this? It was kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. It reminded me of the end of Fiddler on the Roof. If you've ever been in that show, we all just stood in a line and sang this sad song about leaving our home, but how we had to. It literally was the same thing. They could cut that guy's a cappella solo. It was kind of weird, but the actual song itself was really good. And I thought it was well placed. Seeing as though, you know, there is some, you know, in the movie they play it off as them, like, oh, they're just going to Paris for a trip. Like, they're leaving and they're not coming back. Like, you know, they're wanted. They're on the run. Like, if anyone finds them and realizes that she's actually Anastasia, she will be killed. Um, and they have this whole thing where Gleb is going after them and disguising himself. That's basically the entire act, too, is that they're in Paris. Gleb is following them, you know, a lot of, um, Russians escape to Paris, and they have, like, you know, there's, like, a lot of tension there, because they're, like, oh, these dirty Russians, and, you know, the French don't really like them, but they're there, and, like, you know, oh, you can tell that they're Russian by their dirty shoes, like, they talk about that a little bit, it opens up Paris holds a key to your heart, which... I, like I said before, when they transition to Broadway, they need a larger cast. 
They need more power. It's kind of like Be Our Guest. It reminded me a lot of that. They, they just need more. They need... This needs to be a big cast show. They needed... For, for Remember in St. Petersburg, it was amazing. But they needed the power. Like They had like maybe like three people in a voice part. That doesn't work for a huge ensemble number. Especially when you're reusing people that were really obviously the royal family in the first scene, it just kind of broke the fourth wall a little bit. But, like, they have such good potential with this show. It's really good. But, yeah, the, and Paris, it, it, it's a great number. It, it can be even bigger. They just need to, when they transition to Broadway, they just need to make it big. They just need to make it huge, and it'll be amazing. Um, the Dowager Empress was freaking amazing she was sometimes when they have old people like older actors in shows like it really it it's really obvious but she has a fantastic voice she's a great actress like the whole thing like at the ballet like they keep that whole part from the movie um and that that's where the ballet um part comes in like they have a whole actual ballet going on it was well, the dancers messed up, but it, it was because the guy didn't catch her right. But it, it was really good. Like, and like I said, they've been reusing the same, like, four people to do everything. And these girls that they got, freaking talented because they're ballerinas and they can sing. And they're freaking, the people they found for this show are amazing. They just need more of them. Um, but, the da yeah, the Dowager Empress and Dimitri, they have their little tizzy and, like, she slaps him and it's, like, really powerful. It's just so well done. Um, the, ju just the dancing in general, it was so good. Like, I was not expecting it to be so awesome. And Lily, Lily and, v not Vlad, it's pronounced Vlad, apparently, they were so funny. It, it's so great. Lily has such a great little personality. And it really comes across well. Um, especially, um, they go to this Russian, like, you know, club, like, after hours type of thing. And they, you know, she's dancing on the table. She's singing. It's, it's it's hilarious, and then her and Vlad have this little, like, romance thing, and, like, they have their whole hilarious, like, tango dancing, like, oh, I love you, let's, or not, I love you, it's like, let's hook up, it's hilarious, and they're older, so it, it just makes it even more funny, and, and Lily is just really talented, she's, she was such a good singer, they, they, and Vlad, he was amazing, throughout the whole show, he was hilarious, that he was one of my favorites in the whole show, um, Anya, amazing. Uh, literally all these people were so good. I, they cast it very well, but like I said, all they need to do is make it bigger. Um, and I also really just like to close things off, because I could probably keep talking for forever, but to close it off, I really enjoyed how tastefully they did the ending, because... Basically, how they ended it was that Gleb showed up, he revealed himself, and it was and it was him and Anya alone, and he had the gun, and he's like, I can't do it. He, he like, and he's, and he was like, oh, and she's like, fine, kill me, and I can be with my family. He's like, I just can't, and then he's like, oh, and basically, it's like she's winning either way, even if he did shoot her, but he chooses not to, and then she disappears, and then the Dowager Empress says you know, oh, well, I don't think we'll be seeing any more of that lovely young girl, and basically, they both are doing press conferences, the Dowager Empress and Gleb, and they're talking about how, both about how Anastasia was just a fantasy, um, that they shouldn't go looking for her anymore, and they both have their own reasons as to say why, but it was, and basically, it, it's a statement to everyone because, you know, th this was a thing that people thought that she was alive, but really it was just a fantasy. It was, you know, something to distract people from the fact that they were all murdered um, and, you know, went on for years. But it, it the, the reality of their statements couldn't, you know, it couldn't be more real. Like, it was, it was treated so well. And then it, at the end, it, it's like her and Dimitri and they're... Um, like, 
you know, like, uh, pose as if they're dancing together and then the royal family's around them and then they both move opposite, like a music box. And it was just so good. It was, I loved it. I, I'm not going to lie, I started to tear up during the opening number because I was like, this is amazing. I, I would recommend anyone see this show. I am so excited to see it transition to Broadway. Um, and if anyone has any more questions, obviously, like I said, I could continue talking about this for like five ever. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, leave, leave me a message. I'd be happy to talk about the show. Like I said, I did like an eight hour round trip with my friend to see the show and I couldn't have been more happy with it. I'm so happy that I got to see the show, and I can't wait to see it transition to Broadway. So, like I said, if you have any questions, if you ever want to see me make a video again, comment down below or give me a like or something like that. Have a nice day. Bye.